Have we already started? Hi guys, my name is Lasha and today I will be teaching you advanced vocabulary lesson. Our topic is fashion for today and as you see, I'm sewing something, okay? And my look is a little bit different from my everyday uh, look because I'm going to teach you today some words and objects about fashion, sewing, uh, and etc. Okay, hello everyone once again. First of all, what am I doing now? I am sewing. So, this can be the first word that we learn for today. Sewing. Let me write it for you. Sew. Sew is a verb and it is the action what I was doing a little bit ago. Okay? Sewing. Doing this. I can continue a little bit later, maybe. Guys, what is this thing? Does anyone know the name of this? Hi, Alem. Alem, do you know what this is? Okay, this one is fabric, but I'm asking you about this thing. This thing is called a needle. Okay, a needle. If you want to sew something, you need to have a needle. And also, you need to have something else. You need to have this. What is this, guys? This thing, what is this one called? This is thread. The next object that we will learn today is what I'm wearing. Does anyone have any idea what this is and why we need this thing? Why we need this? Let me show you. Where is my sewing? So when you are sewing something and if you don't want your needle to hurt your fingers because sometimes you do like this and it can hurt your finger. So this is protection. Instead of using my finger, I will be using this to push. And also, if it comes on this side, it protects my finger. So, th Sibel, thank you very much. You are correct. It protects the finger. And this thing is called thimble. Thimble. Another thing that um, people use when they are sewing is this thing. This is not a nose for clown. This is not this. This is something different. This is for needles. You save your needles in this one. So this one is called needle pillow. Needle pillow. What else have we got? We have got this. Very necessary object for sewing. This one has some numbers. 
and why I use it. For example, if I want to check someone's size, I can see that I'm 101 centimeters. Yes, Sibel, we can say measure for this. We can also use measure tape, tape measure. All of them are okay. Measuring tape is the best word. You can also say just measure, of course. And this one is what I hate. My grandmother used to be tailor, or actually steamless, and she used these things a lot. But I'm so, so afraid of this thing. This one is called safety pin. Or we can also use only pin. Pin or safety pin. It has two names. And the last thing that you need for sewing is something like this. I'm sure you know the name of this object. This one is called, what is this, guys? We use it to cut something. This is not a knife, but, but what is this? This is scissors. Scissors. Thank you, Shule, you are correct. Guys, give me just one minute. I will get rid of these materials because it's not so comfortable to be sewing and teaching at the same time. But I like this one. This is very cool stuff, I think. Okay, now it is safer to teach you. So, we learned some words already. We learned the verb sew, and also we have learned the objects that we need for sewing. Needle, thread, thimble, uh, needle pillow, measuring tape, safety pin, and scissors. Now let's try to um, form some sentences and use these words in the sentences. Um, if you can help me, it will be very good if you can give me some sentences using these words. I will write my examples and at the same time, can you please write some examples with these words? I will also use your examples. For example, I can say, I was sewing when the lesson started. For the needle, I can say that I'm afraid of needles. I'm afraid of needles a lot, actually. And I'm not afraid of this needle that much. I'm afraid for medical needle, for medical purposes. Um, Thimble. Maybe I can write a sentence like this. My grandma there used to be a streamless. No, maybe we can write another word for it. Actually, we will learn this word over here, seamstress. And I remember she always wore thimble to protect her fingers. A 
thread. Maybe I can say a sentence like this. If I want to, to sew uh, jeans, pants, I mean, um, I will probably use blue thread. I think this is the best color for jeans. I will use blue thread. Uh, another thing, we have got needle pillow. Um, a sentence can be something like this. I have never used a needle pillow. As for measuring tape, we use it for a lot of things. Um, maybe I can write a question like this. Can you please hand me a measuring tape? My mother uses safety pins for blankets. There can be a sentence like this. And as for the scissors, I need to cut the thread. So I will use a scissors. Guys, is this sentence correct? Is my last sentence correct? This one. Is it correct? I mean this sentence. Is it grammatically correct? It's not correct. There is a mistake. Um, I'm helping you. So can you please find a mistake in this sentence? What is wrong with this sentence? Dilara said using... Uh, no, not using because I have a will will shows future and we need to use uh, verb one tense use Shule, you are correct a scissors is mistake why is it mistake because scissors is not um, singular in english like jeans pants shorts we can't use them with article a because Scissors has two parts. That's why we cannot say a scissors and we need to say a pair of scissors. Now it is correct. So we cannot say a scissors like uh, same rule like pants, shoes, um, jeans. We need to use a pair of something, a pair of scissors. Or you can just say scissors without a or without anything. Okay, the next word that we are going to learn is accent. Probably you know the meaning of accent uh, because uh, when we are talking about languages, uh, we probably use this word and we say American accent, British accent, uh, Australian accent. This is one meaning of the word. Another meaning uh, for the word, if we are talking about fashion, it has a little bit different meaning. And it means emphasize given to a distinctive characteristic of a garment. So if um, there is some kind of accent, it emphasizes some characteristic of the garment. I will think about example a little bit uh, later. Maybe I will use several of them together. 
Um, acid wash. I think you know acid and you know wash, but do you know the meaning of it together if I use acid wash, what it means? Do you know what it means, acid wash? Think about acid wash. Meanwhile, I will give you uh, an example sentence for accent. Maybe her dress had a very beautiful acid wash. Uh, it is treatment done to a fabric so uh, the color is faded out like bleaching um, I hope you understand if you don't understand I will try to explain later like if I don't want uh, the garment or the fabric to have very bright color I will use this acid wash and the color will become faded out. So it will have fade out effect. Acid wash technique. Is not popular anymore. It used to be popular um, in 80s, very much, 70s, 80s, but nowadays it's not that much popular, I can say. The next word, or actually phrase, that we will learn is um, achromatic colors. Achromatic colors, this means uh, no color. But I'm not saying without any color. No color in fashion means black and white. So if something, for example, a dress or t-shirt or something is only black or white, we will say that it has achromatic colors if there is no other color. I try not to wear Achromatic colors. Next one, uh, androgynous style. It is very popular nowadays, and a lot of designers try to incorporate this into their designs, and uh, they try to um, prepare and design models like this. Uh, androgynous style is like unisex. It's not feminine, it's not masculine. So it is not for a man, it is not for a woman. It is difficult to understand which gender this clothes is for. Another name can be unisex fashion. Let's write another name as well. Unisex fashion. Um, do you know anyone who designs unisex fashion or who designs androgynous style? Guys, do you know any designer who uses androgynous style? I'm very bad with the uh, names. And I can't remember names of designers very well. For example, now I'm thinking about someone. It's in my mind, but I can't remember the name of the person. I know that it's a man. That's the only thing I can remember. So maybe you can help me. Do you know anyone um, who designs androgynous style? Or maybe you know some uh, stores, some boutiques which have unisex clothes. Maybe a brand. We can think about it as well. Any brand which has unisex fashion, unisex clothes. Mm, maybe 
maybe we can say about Sarah or Mango that they don't have unisex fashion. So we can use the opposite. They don't have. They have very feminine style and definitely their clothes are for women. Um, army look. Probably you understand army look meaning. It means when the clothes look like army uniform. Um, maybe we can say a sentence like this. Some teenagers like army look a lot. Next word that we are going to learn is Art Nouveau. Um, of course, this is not English word and this one is French. It comes from French language. And Art Nouveau, it means style that incorporates linear and curvy uh, designs. So there are lots of lines and lots of curves. This is line, guys, you understand probably. And this is curve. Okay, so if linear design and curvy linear design is together, this is Art Nouveau. I can't remember any designer using Art Nouveau. Guys, if you have better sentences than me, please, I will appreciate if you write uh, them to me. And even if you can't make good sentences, you can use some easy and basic sentences because why are we learning vocabulary? To use them in our speech or writing. And because we can't have any speaking now as we are doing our online lesson, we can only use writing. Next one is a counterment and a counterment um, means when we use something uh, like very popular latest style of clothing or um, latest style of decoration or latest style of behavior, we call it a, we call it accouterments. For example, um, my friend Julia is a fashion designer and she always uses accouterments. Okay. American style. It is a very sporty style of clothing. Mm. Do you like wearing American style, guys? Do you like wearing American style? American style clothes are um, very loose, not fitting, very comfortable and relaxing clothes. Do you like wearing American style clothes? Let's see if we have any uh, messages on Facebook as well. Let me check.
Human Electra doesn't like wearing American style. Mm. Okay. Can I use your sentence? I will write your sentence and maybe Sibel sentence. Sibel likes wearing American style. Apparel, guys, is another word for cloth uh, or garment or clothing. We can use it for all of them. So, apparel, it means cloth, uh, clothing or garment. All of them is apparel. Next word we have got uh, for today is atelier. Atelier is a place where they sew the clothes, where they make clothes. This we call atelier. It is usually a large one. They sew a lot of clothes. Not clothes, let's use apparel. In atelier. Amazing idea, Schule. I also thought about it when I used to be a kid and younger, but nowadays I'm okay. I don't want atelier anymore. Au naturel. Again, this one is not an English word. It comes from French and au not naturel means natural. So it means when there is not a lot of things in the style and the person's view is very natural. Not a lot of makeup, not very distinctive hairstyle, something like natural, okay? which looks like normal, real, natural body of the person when we don't use a lot of things. Now, as for the avant-garde, avant-garde also, this is not English word, and it means something very, very innovative design, which um, is very original and which has not been seen before. Something very, very new and very innovative. I can write maybe a sentence like this. All natural can never be avant-garde look. They are almost opposite of each other, so we can never create avant-garde look, very original look with something very natural. Uh, next word, we have got Beaumont, also it is French word, Beau means beautiful in French, Mont means world. So what do you think is beautiful world? Beaumont. If I translate part by part, word by word, like chicken translation, it is Beautiful world. What do you think is the real meaning of Beaumont? I'm waiting for your comments on YouTube or Facebook. We are live also on Twitter account, but unfortunately I can't check uh, Twitter messages now. I'm on Facebook and YouTube. I will be able to see your comments on Facebook and YouTube. Beaumont, beautiful world. Of course, it doesn't mean beautiful world, but it means the fashionable world. Okay? So, if we are talking about people who are very fashionable, we can say about them, it's uh, the Beaumont of our city or Beaumont of our country. I don't know the Beaumont of Turkey. I have almost no idea. 
black tie event is formal official uh, event where everyone needs to go uh, very very official for example wedding is black tie event what else can be black tie event guys i said wedding what else can be black tie event Firuza is with us on Facebook. I just saw the answers. Thank you very much. All of them were correct. So my question is, what can be a black tie event other than wedding? What other things? can be black tie event. No idea, guys. Nothing. You don't know what can be black tie event. Funeral. Oh, it's a bad thing, but mm, funeral, funeral. Can we consider as a black tie event? Maybe yes. Why not? If it is a funeral of someone who is very famous and people try, celebrities go there, probably they will wear like very official clothes and yes, it can be black tie event. But usually we don't choose very, very good and fashionable clothes for funeral. We don't choose our best clothes. So it depends. Sometimes, yes, you are correct. Business dinner, yes, it can be. Uh, for example, opening of something. Let's say you are opening a new branch. And we open a new branch and there is um, some kind of... We invite the guests and there is some kind of party. It can be black tie event. Sibel says wedding. Yeah, we mentioned wedding as well. Business dinner can be a black tie event. Wedding definitely is black tie event. We talked about this. Bodycon clothing. Do you know what is bodycon clothing, guys? Bodycon clothing is something which is very, very, very tight. Okay? Very, very tight. When you cannot move almost. This kind of clothing we call bodycon clothing. <laughs> Human Electra says groom wears bodycon clothing. <laughs> bodycon clothing. Some girls, actually, I don't think a lot of girls enjoy bodycon clothing. So let's write a uh, few girls enjoy bodycon clothing. I think everyone prefers to be comfortable and not tight like this, especially in the situation um, after pandemic when people gain a lot of weight. I think all our shirts, t-shirts and uh, our outfits are bodycon clothing right now. <laughs> ah, Human Electra, you said about uh, black tie event, definitely. Groom, yes, for the wedding. Uh, next thing, we have got Bib and Tucker. Of course, this is not official word, Bib and Tucker. We don't use it in formal language. And Bib and Tucker, it means your best clothes. 
the best clothes that you have. Um, for example, I'm going on a date, so I will wear my bib and tucker. I'm going on a date, like boyfriend girlfriend kind of thing, uh, and I need to wear the best clothes. Okay, this is a uh, bib and tucker. Another name for your best clothes is Sunday special, Sunday clothes, or Sunday dress. Why do you think we use the word Sunday here? Why don't we say, for example, Saturday dress or Wednesday dress? Why do we say Sunday clothes? Sunday is a holiday or special day for us. Gulshen, you are absolutely correct. It is a holiday for everyone and we don't wear our everyday clothes or our work clothes and we try to wear something very special on Sunday because usually we go somewhere special on Sunday. Um, and actually, I think Sevda has the correct answer. This one comes from church. Uh, I hope you understand church. Um, this is not true for Muslims, but for Christians, we must go to church on Sunday and people um, in some cultures, not every culture actually, but in some culture, uh, when women or men go to church, they try to wear something very good. Um, it is very common thing, for example, in the United States. Uh, not nowadays, maybe, but like 30, 40 years ago, when people did not have a lot of clothes and etc., everyone had one Sunday dress or Sunday shirt. Something that you had to wear in church. If you go to a church... Put your Sunday shirt on. Boho. Maybe you understand that boho is a short form, short word for something. Boho. Boho. What do you think it means? Boho. Boho comes from Bohemian style. Bohemian style, it is a mixture of Bohemian and hippie influences. Hippie and Bohemian. This style, Boho, was very popular in 70s, 80s, like when this kind of uh, hippie lifestyle, rock music started and they were very popular. Also in fashion, it appeared a new style, boho style. Do you know what is very important for boho style? What is a must? What is a must-have element in boho style? If you think about boho style, what comes to your mind? I think one of the things that we need to say about boho style is a scarf. A scarf is an important element of boho. 
for example, if you think about Steven Tyler, Steven Tyler uh, uses scarf a lot. Gulshan likes boho style for home decoration. Uh huh. Good. Camouflage clothing, probably you understand. I think it is same in Turkish. Camouflage is when we try to somehow hide some things. Uh, and camouflage clothing is if we use colors. Which colors do you think we use for camouflaging? Which color do we use in camouflage clothing? So, I missed this part. I'm waiting for the color. Shule says green. We call it uh, not just green. We say... A little bit different name. It is like a green but different shade of green. We call it Haki. Catwalk and runway. One of them is American English, another one is British English. Maybe you know what it means. Uh, it is a place where models walk. Um, during the fashion shows, for example, we watch some fashion shows or maybe we watch it on TV. The place where the models walk, this is catwalk or runway. Um, girls and boys, tell me which model has the best Catwalk. Which one is the best in catwalk or runway? Which model has the best walk? I'm also thinking about one model. I can't remember her name very well. I will check the name, guys. Human Electra says Chala she she can. Okay, let's write this one, Chala. Giselle Bundchen, definitely. Giselle Bundchen is amazing. Um, Adriana Lima. Okay, good one. I'm still looking for my favorite one. Jocelyn Gonzalez. I think Jocelyn Gonzalez is one of the best at runway and catwalk. Okay, now let's move to next word. Next word we have got color fast. When you hear this, maybe you are thinking about like fast. But no, it is kind of different thing. Color fast we use to describe something which has very good quality and after washing a lot, it will not fade out. So, color fast is something which will not 
fade out after washing a lot or um, this material or fabric maybe we can say is color fast Contrast, probably you understand that when two things are very different from each other, we say contrast. For example, uh, if you are wearing black and yellow, it is a contrast because black and yellow are not similar to, to each other. They are very, very different from each other. Black and yellow are contrasting colors. This action makes a big contrast. Angelo, thank you. Angelo or Angelo Martinez. Angelo. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. This action makes a big contrast. Yep, we can use like this. Cosmopolitan. I think you know the meaning of cosmopolitan. It means not local. Cosmopolitan is for a universal thing for a lot of different countries or different places in the world. Uh, for example, Istanbul is a very cosmopolitan city. Uh, we don't have only Turkish people in Istanbul. We don't have only... Turkish culture or Turkish architecture or Turkish food in Istanbul. It's cosmopolitan, so people from many, many different countries and parts of the world live there and have their influence. For example, um, if we are talking about fashion, um, I will show you something. Can you wait just a minute, guys? I have just remembered about it. This hat. This is not cosmopolitan, okay? I cannot wear this hat everywhere because it is very local and traditional for one country. I bought this one in Egypt. I guess this is Egyptian. Angelo has written uh, Mexico, Mexico City is a cosmopolitan place. True, we can write that. And I can also say that my head is not cosmopolitan. Couturier, also not an English word, it is French again, and we call these two a men fashion designer, men, male fashion designer, we call couturier. Do you know any couturier guys? Do you know any couturier, Turkish or non-Turkish from any country? If you don't give me answer, I will write my answer and I will write about amazing Georgian designer 
often deal li is a couturier and human electra says Jamil Ipekchi okay let's write often deal li and Jamil Ipekchi are couturiers guys let's have a break for um, 15 minutes and 15 minutes later i will be back with you please stay with us and enjoy your break Adım at ki gerçekleşsin her dilek Bekliyor seni parla bir gelecek Sen ona gittikçe o sana gelecek Just English'le şimdi sen de dile gel Just English'le şimdi sen de dile Just Şimdi sen de dile gel Just English'le Şimdi sen de dile gel A world with a joyous smile A world where A won't only buy Satisfaction and learn to survive In the outside world just sing your style Learn, play, sing and dance Do what you don't see anywhere else Learn, play, sing and dance Do what do just sing your style Hayat devam ettikçe bitmez bu yarış Sen de bir dil öğren macerayla tanış Hayat devam ettikçe bitmez bu yarış Sen de bir dil öğren bu dünyaya karış Just English'le şimdi sen de dile gel Just English'le şimdi sen de dile gel
olduğun yerden hemen kalkmam gerek Adım at ki gerçekleşsin her dile Bekliyor seni parlak bir gelecek Sen ona gittikçe o sana gelecek Just English'le şimdi sen de dile gel Just English'le şimdi sen de dile Just English'le şimdi sen de dile gel Just English'le şimdi sen de dile gel A world with a joy and smile, a world where A won't only buy Satisfaction and learn to survive in an outside world just think your style Learn, play, sing and dance, do what you don't see anywhere else right. Learn, play, sing and dance, do what do just think your style Hayat devam ettikçe bitmez bu yarış Sen de bir dil öğren macerayla tanış Hayat devam ettikçe bitmez bu yarış Sen de bir dil öğren bu dünyaya karış Just şimdi sen de dile gel Just şimdi sen de bile Hi again, I'm back with you guys and we are going to learn some other words about fashion and then we will do also a little exercise test um, about it. Next word that we are going to learn is craze. Craze is something which becomes very popular in a short period of time. Something becomes very popular in a short period of time. For example, I can say that trapping um, is the latest craze. Trapping, I will explain a little bit later. It's this word over here. 
dated fashion or another expression used for it is out of fashion something that is not popular anymore like in the past it was popular but now it's not popular anymore this we call dated fashion or out of fashion um, what is out of fashion guys for example we can say that um, what is out of fashion what is out of fashion um, animal prints Animal prints are not popular anymore. The opposite of out of fashion is in fashion, or we can just say in. Only in is also enough. Um, let me think about it. What is in fashion? What is popular nowadays? What kind of styles? Beach wear. Beach wear is in fashion nowadays. It's very popular nowadays. Décolletage. Again, it's not English word. It comes from French once again. It means this part. Like shoulders and the beginning of the breast. This we call décolletage. Some people like wearing low décolletage, low, so it means the dress starts somewhere very low. Um, it is area from the neck to the chest, so from here until here. This is décolletage. And now we come to draping. Draping, this is a technique used in fashion and it is how the clothes hang, how the fabric hangs. For example, I take this piece and I'm doing something with it, like something like this, this and this. It is somehow draping, okay? I draped it. Polka dot dress is out of fashion, I think. You meant for out of fashion or in fashion? Uh, Décolletage can be very attractive. And as for draping, we already said example here. I will copy the same one. Drop tail style means when the dress is lower in front and longer in the back side. This kind of thing we call drop tail style. Drop tail style is a very good decision. Decision for a black tie event. Eclectic style of fashion. Guys, please um, pay attention. This is not electric, it is eclectic. Eclectic means mixing different things together. So eclectic style of fashion is when there are different fashion styles together in one thing. Some designers are very successful in incorporating different styles together. They are eclectic. We can use as adjective or noun, both of them is correct. Ensemble. Ensemble is, um, how to say it? We use it in two different ways. Number one, we call ensemble a group of dancers, a lot of dancers who dance together, we can say ensemble. Also, we say ensemble about the outfit when you 
choose different things, for example, one shirt, then one skirt and a jacket. And when you put everything together, it becomes an ensemble. My mother created a beautiful ensemble. So, putting different things together will be ensemble. As for ethnic, probably you understand the word ethnic, and when we use it for fashion and style, it has absolutely the same meaning as general English. For example, I love some ethnical um, African styles or dresses. Maybe we can write this sentence. I like... Embellishing. Do you have any idea about the word embellishing, guys, and what it means, embellishing? Embellishing is when you add some elements, uh, when you uh, add some elements to the clothing. For example, uh, like if I put, if I put some brush, brush probably you understand, if I put brush, this will be embellishing for the dress or skirt or etc. Um, also, we can say that um, sometimes maybe hair clip into the hair. This can be also embellishing for the uh, look. Gulshan loves Indian clothes. Ah, my mother also loves ethnic Indian clothes. Embellishing. Embellishing plays a critical role in creating ensemble. Now we have a lot of words or related words with fashion, but before I teach you this, Human etc. wrote something. Turkish girls make a Hannah night before getting married, it's a traditional night, and they wear bindali. So, bindali is something ethnic, I guess, because I have never heard of it before. This would be ethnic. Fashion forward. Fashion forward, we say about the person whose uh, fashion ideas are in the future. Like, the person can see the future and uh, is looking into the future. This kind of person is fashion forward. Do you know anyone who is fashion forward? Maybe some designers who create something which are fashion forward. I don't know why, but John Galliano came to my mind. I think John Galliano was a very fashion-forward person. I'm checking if he's still alive. Maybe something happened. No, nothing happened. He's still alive. John Galliano is a fashion forward person. Fashion icon. Someone who is very big in the fashion, like who uh, created um, a lot of good things. For the fashion and a lot of people try to look up to this person a lot of people try to copy this person uh, we call fashion icon guys who do you think is the biggest fashion icon you can tell me turkish or non-turkish one doesn't matter fashion icons
Um, fashion icon is not only about designers. Maybe uh, we can say about a person who you wore some amazing clothes and the person kind of changed the fashion style. This person can also be called fashion icon. Maybe some models or some actresses, etc. Gulshan thinks Lady Gaga is a fashion icon. Can be. Lady Gaga is a fashion icon. Um, okay, we can write Lady Gaga, but I think Madonna was or still is maybe still a fashion icon and Lady Gaga has some similarities to Madonna sometimes she copied some things from Madonna fashion line uh, probably you understand the meaning of this uh, it means all of the clothing a fashion designer produces for a specific category for example we can say um, who we can say Let's say Versace has several different lines. Maybe they have um, the T-shirts line and they have mm, not sportswear, not so much classical wear, semi-formal line mostly. So uh, all the products mm, designed and produced in one category we call a line, okay? Fashion icon is Yasemin Ozilhan for Turkey. Yasemin Ozilhan I have no idea who is Yasemin Ozilhan. I will check after the lesson. Uh, he wants to start a fashion line. Maybe we can write like this. A young designer wants to start a fashion line. Fashion house is um, a company involved in fashion design. Company, we don't say fashion company, we say fashion house. I will give you an example from Soviet Union. There were not many fashion houses in Soviet Union. Fashionista. Probably you understand a person who is fashionista is someone who loves fashion a lot and pays a lot of attention and is dedicated and devoted to fashion. <coughs> I think fashionistas are very funny. They are very funny people. Fashion sense. We uh, use this Think fashion sense if we want to describe someone who has very good understanding of fashion and how to match different things. We don't need to use fashion sense only for uh, designers. Like I know someone who dresses very well, so this person has very good fashion sense. I will write about myself. I guess I have a fashion sense. Fashion tribe, we call uh, people, tribe, you know that it is group of people, and we use fashion tribe to describe a group of people who share common, similar fashion uh, interests. Um, maybe we can say that I want to become a member of their fashion tribe. Fashion victim, on the other hand, is a person who uh, follows current uh, fashion 
But who doesn't have very good sense of fashion just follows and whatever the person sees um, on TV or uh, maybe on the runway or fashion show, the person wears it, but it doesn't really suit him or her, for example, okay? My cousin suffered a lot because she was a fashion victim. For example, we can use a sentence like this. Foundation uh, is something that is used underneath. For example, girls, uh, if you use makeup, probably you understand what is foundation for the makeup. Like before you wear, uh, before you wear any makeup, first you need to put foundation into your face. We use also same thing, foundation for the dresses, like uh, undergarment, something we call foundation. Caliano created an amazing foundation. for this dress. Gradation, maybe you know this word, 50 shades of gray. You know this book. Shade and grade are kind of same. So if we want to explain something like, we know red, but red has different gradations. So we have different types of red. And these um, differences we call gradation. It is important to choose the correct correct color. Pay attention to the gradation. Haute couture. Haute couture is also a French word and it explains some kind of clothing. Maybe it is same in Turkish. Let's see, guys. Do you know the meaning of hot couture? Let's see your comments. Maybe you know it. Hi, Salo. Human, etc. You wrote something in Turkish, but I can't understand it at all because my Turkish is not so good. Haute couture is expensive and very fashionable clothes produced and created by very famous designers or fashion houses. And haute couture is not for everyone. Not everyone can wear this haute couture. Now, hem. Uh, hem is... Guys, let me show you hem again on the scarf, maybe. Like you have a fabric material. And if you want to uh, use this fabric in something, you put this outside material inside and you start sewing, sewing. So this will be called hem. When it is put inside, uh, when inside is put, sorry, when outside is put inside. <laughs> this is hem and hemline also we can say. Rashid, ba, 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 ba. I cannot read it. Hem, uh, maybe we can say that designers should be careful with hem.
or they should be careful with hemline. Yeah, hem will be verb and hemline will be noun. High fashion, probably you understand uh, it very easily. High fashion is something that is uh, very um, exclusive and fashionable. Like, it's not for everyone again, because it is exclusive. It's not for mass market, not for many people. I will copy the same example. Hourglass figure. We use hourglass figure to describe a woman whose waistline, waist, you understand waist, yes? Where you put your skirt. Waist is very small and other parts uh, like the chest and hips are big. So it looks like a glass. Amanda has an hourglass finger, maybe we can say. Imitation is something which is not original. It is like copy from something else. I created, I designed Imitation of Dior. Maybe I copied a dress from Dior and I designed it. Uh, next one, we have got Kitsch. Do you know what the Kitsch is, guys? Do you have any idea? Kitsch is very low quality style. Who is famous for Kitsch? I'm thinking about Hollywood actors or actresses. I don't know anyone from Hollywood, but I can say, for example, I can say, I forgot the name, one uh, TV presenter, Georgian TV presenter. Okay, I will use this one. Margot Luchko always wears kitsch. Minimalist. You know minimum probably, and minimalist comes from minimum. Um, in Japanese culture, for example, minimalist style is very popular. They don't use a lot of things. They try to use uh, minimal things. Motif is um, something that something that unites uh, different looks. For example, a designer created a fashion show and created uh, twelve different pieces, uh, and these twelve different pieces should have something in common. This thing in common, this is motif. For example, all of them maybe use the same color. So in this case, this will be the motif. Or maybe all of them have same style of bag. This will be motif also. I could not understand the motif of his latest fashion show. Muslin is material which is used to test the design. Like before uh, designers create uh, clothes, they first use this muslin. It's some kind of material which is very, very low quality and very, very cheap. First they use muslin and they create it in muslin. Then they use real material and they create something with real one.
ombre. Girls, probably you know the meaning of ombre. Come on, help me. It is also something related to um, something related to hair, hairstyle or colors. Gulshen, I totally agree with you. Minimalist can be very, very, very elegant. Ombre. Ombre is uh, when we have um, one color going into different shades. For example, we start with dark red and it goes to lighter red and more light and light, lighter, lighter. And finally, it goes somewhere into like almost pink. Okay, this is ombre. I don't like ombres because it is very difficult to have very good gradations of color. Next word, we have got oversize. Probably you understand oversize style clothes or overstyle clothes, something that is uh, bigger than your real size. Um, I was in the United States in 2005-2006. Oversized pants were very popular in the US. Oversized pants were very popular in the US in 2000s. Next thing that we are going to learn is peekaboo style. Do you have any idea about peekaboo? Peekaboo style. Boys, you will enjoy peekaboo very much. If we have any boys watching, you should definitely know this. Peekaboo is cut on uh, clothes, which shows a little bit nude part of the body. For example, if I cut my shirt here, not my, but it will be much better on girls. If you cut the shirt over here, this will be a peekaboo style. So it's not totally naked, but it shows some part, some nude part of the body. I enjoy mm, elegant. Peekaboo style clothes. If it's not vulgar, if it is elegant, I like it very much. Next word that we are going to learn is ready to wear, or there is also short form RTW. Ready to wear, we use about the clothes which are made for mass, um, mass people, a lot of people. Um, and you can buy these kind of clothes in any shopping center. So it's not something exclusive. For example, cotton sells RTW. Retro, probably you understand, is a um, uh, style uh, which is old, like 60s, 50s or etc. My neighbor likes retro style. She always wears pencil skirts. Reversible clothing is actually very in fashion. Uh, reversible clothing is something that you can wear from inside out as well. Okay, you can wear from both sides, both ways. And it is a little bit different.
I think reversible clothing are very practical in a way because you buy just one thing and you can wear like two different looks. But at the same time, um, they are not practical. <laughs> I will write very practical. Silhouette is the shape of something. The shape of dress we can call a silhouette. The shape of person also we can call a silhouette. The dress designed by her has an amazing silhouette. Seamstress, remember I used uh, this word in one of the sentences in the beginning. Seamstress is a person who sews the clothes. Usually we use uh, the word seamstress for a woman and for men we use tailor. There is also another difference between seamstress and tailor. Seamstress is someone who um, sews the clothes without any customer or any client. Tailor is a person who creates something for specific customer. My grandma used to be a seamstress. Next word, we have got salvage. Um, does anyone know meaning of salvage? Salvage is the finished edge of the product or fabric. Like, for example, this one. Can you see this? When it is already finished, we will call it salvage. End part is finished. Seamstresses need to uh, finish all the things before they show dress or the uh, look to their customers. Yeah, it's like sleeve and edge type of correct, but we don't use only for this. All kind of edge, okay? Streetwear, you understand probably the meaning of it. Uh, streetwear look. Does anyone like streetwear look? Like t-shirt and jeans, something like that. Next word, we have got separate. Separate is something that we can buy separately. For example, a t-shirt, jacket and pants. If I buy these ones not together, but separately, it will be separate. I always like combining separates. Sweats, it is uh, same with sweatpants, sweatshirt, probably you understand these um, kind of uh, clothes which we use. It's a little bit sporty style. Uh, hoods, for example, hoodies, these can be also sweats. Maybe we can say that I use sweats for running.
tailoring, I think we already explained tailor and this will be just a verb, you understand. Uh, next thing we have got here is to all. To all is uh, test dress. Remember I said that uh, when the designer creates something, first designer creates with muslin, doesn't use the original um, fabric material. Toil is uh, the dress which is made first and if toil looks good then the designer will create the real dress. So it's for testing purposes. Trend. It's like the direction uh, going somewhere. For example, something is trendy, so it's becoming popular. If there is a trend, upcoming trend, maybe we can say. About prints in fashion. Trunk show. Trunk show we call uh, when there is a collection of um, clothes in the shops or um, stores. Display of designers clothes in the store we call trunk show. You can be very um, lucky if you see a trunk show. If you just go to some store and you don't have no idea, but that day there is some kind of uh, designer's collection show <coughs> at that store, you are very lucky. Upcycled clothing is a very popular thing nowadays when uh, designers use old um, clothes and they try to create something better from this. So they take old t-shirts, for example, and change old t-shirt to something better. Guys, do you have any idea what means LBD? Every woman should have an LBD. LBD means little black dress. If you are going somewhere on holiday, for example, you should always put LBD into your suitcase. You never know when you will need this little black dress. We have got some phrases that I also wanted to teach you. Uh, old fashioned, we call person who is thinking in old way. This kind of person we call old fashioned. Uh, my mom is very old fashioned. Maybe I can write this. Strike a pose. Um, when you are taking a photo, you need to strike a pose. So, like posing, we can say, same, strike a pose. To be dressed to kill, it means to wear something amazing and you want to show that you are different from everyone. Uh, this kind of um, dressing, we will say, to be dressed to kill. I went to a wedding and I was dressed to kill. To have uh, an eye for fashion is someone who has good sense of fashion. Remember, we talked about fashion sense. It is the same thing. 
I will write easy example for this one. I have an eye for fashion. Dress for the occasion means uh, that uh, you need to uh, dress for the occasion. For example, if you are going to a wedding, you cannot go with shorts. If you are going to school, you don't need to wear nightgown. Okay, so you need to dress for the occasion. Like wearing appropriate clothes. Depending on where you are going, you should wear that type or that style of clothing. And last word that I will teach you today is dress up. Dress up means uh, to put on something um, not everyday clothes, not normal clothes, but to wear some good uh, clothes. For example, if you are going to a wedding, you don't put your normal everyday clothes, but you need to dress up. Wear something special, okay? If you are going to a, a club or party, you are going to dress for the occasion. Yes, definitely. You are correct, Gulshan. Uh, guys, we are almost over with the time, but I wanted to show you one presentation um, about the styles of clothing and also the patterns. <coughs> Let me show you the presentation which I created for you. Let's start with patterns. So pattern is what kind of print or what kind of directions the fabric has. If you see something like this, this is basket weave. It's usually uh, popular for knitting. This one is brocade. Brocade usually has golden uh, color things like usually they use golden uh, thread to create brocade this thing is called checkered so this kind of fabric we will say checkered fabric or checkered dress for example if we use this material um, this one is called chevron probably you understand where the name comes from it comes from the company chevron this one is called Ditsi. Ditsi is pattern which has like very small um, flowers and not so so I will say not so so beautiful flowers, <coughs> but it's officially it's not like that. Like very small and not very professional uh, drawings. We call Ditsi. Now if it is uh, with flowers also we can use say the floral print or floral pattern as geometric pattern we can use uh, for any kind of geometric uh, shape this uh, one we call greek key i don't know why why this reminds people of greek key but it's like how it's called this one is called Harlequin. It can be with different colors or only with two colors. For example, only black and white. It will also be Harlequin. This is, I think, very popular for clowns. Other than that, I have not seen this kind of thing for dresses or skirt or pants. Animal prints, any kind of animal print, leopard, cat, etc., all of them is animal prints. This one is medallion because it really looks like medallion. Polka dot we use today in one of the sentences. So this one is polka dot. Now let's talk about attire. Attire means style. Ah, sorry, before that we have something more. Stripes, you understand that there can be horizontal stripes and also vertical stripes. 
And last type of pattern is tartan plaid. Um, it is popular for blankets, for example, uh, maybe for some bed sheets and etc. But for clothing, not that much popular, maybe just for coats. Now, when we are talking about the attire or the style, first, of course, we have casual style. Casual style or casual attire, it means you can wear whatever you want. There is absolutely no rule about it. Next one, we have got cocktail attire. Cocktail attire, uh, for women, it is usually short dress, not long, somewhere around the knee. As for the men, it looks very... Um, it also looks like very official for men because the person needs to wear suit, um, shirt, tie. Next one, we have got beach wear or beach attire. Uh, the biggest difference about beach attire and when we say beach clothes is that beach clothes colors are very summery colors like white, blue, uh, pink, and these kind of things, something that reminds you of water and the beach. Black tie um, or formal attire is when you need to wear very, very, very official. Like you must wear a tie or maybe bow tie and a suit. And for the uh, women, it should be definitely long dress, nothing else. Semi-formal is for men. If you wear like um, formal pants and you wear dress shirt, dress shirt in Turkish is gömlek, but you don't wear jacket or cardigan and you don't wear tie, this is semi-formal. As for women, also you can see that they are wearing uh, some short dresses um, and that's why it is semi-formal and not formal. Cocktail, ah, oh, we already said, so it is finished. Thank you very much, guys, for watching um, and joining in today's uh, lesson. I wish all of you very good evening and uh, please stay safe and stay healthy. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channels on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter accounts and also like our videos and write some good comments about teachers. Um, today at uh, 9 o'clock there will be a lesson for elementary. If um, you know someone who is interested, you can tell. Maybe you have got a sister or brother or some friends who will be interested in elementary level. And at 9 o'clock there will be this lesson. I hope uh, to see you again in my for my lessons, maybe tomorrow or some other day. Please enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.